Hey all, Matt Hepworth here, and today we're just going to do a quick video on how to calculate the difference between your aux in Apollo console and your regular line inputs. So we're going to look at how the offset is measured. Let's check it out. Okay, so here I have console, regular setup, nothing special. Just going to click over to Pro Tools. We're going to create two tracks. We're going to do two mono tracks. And I'm going to set the input for my first track to my mic input two. And for my second track, we're going to do my auxiliary. And I'm going to mute these. We don't need to hear them. I'm also going to mute them in console. So mute. And it doesn't matter if I'm pre or post but I usually use pre. Now there's one thing that is kind of a subjective thing. Um, I always track without IDC enabled because the results are more predictable. And when I'm talking about that, if I look in my console settings here, you can see my input delay compensation. If that's set to short, it adds a specific amount of samples and it's driver specific. So, if I'm on short delay, it's always going to add a specific delay in your DAW because the driver's going to recognize that delay. And so because that delay is added, anything that's underneath that delay is automatically compensated for. So it sounds really weird. It kind of is. Medium, for example, is 100 samples, which means everything that you record on your line inputs, but not on your auxiliary, are going to be 100 samples delayed. So anyway, it gets a little convoluted. So I personally don't use it. I leave my IDC off and I manually compensate when necessary. Um, for 90% of the things, it's not necessary. For the others, I just manually compensate with plugins. So anyway, IDC is off. By the way, if you make any of those changes while your DAW is open, you will have to make the changes again. So here we are, our two channels. And I'm just going to grab a microphone here. And uh, this is actually a pretty cool beast. Focus. Yeah. This is a vintage Shure um, SM59 and a very cool mic. Watch for a future video on this guy. Um, but anyway, I don't need to do anything special, leaving the channel muted. I'm just going to turn up my gain. Check, 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 check. Because it's a di because it's a dynamic, it needs quite a bit of gain. That's going to work fine. And you'll notice not seeing the aux over here because we're not sending anything to it. And we need to make sure that we are. So I'm just going to set my aux send. Okay. Now you can see over here got some aux. <laughs> I'm clipping my voiceover mic when I'm snapping. So, um, but I'm not using that. Um, it doesn't need to be named cloud lifter. It's just going to be called input. Okay. So now, <laughs> obviously this is a template I used on an old session. Uh, in fact, I think it was my cloud lifter video initially. So anyway, um, so this is ready. Now in Pro Tools, you can see the signal there. And it's important that we use a transient based signal unless we want to really zoom in and get all crazy. So I'm just going to record enable here. I'm just going to do a couple finger snaps. And that's it. Now I don't need the microphone. Zoom in here. I'm going to use the tab to transient. And it usually is going to get me pretty precise. I'm going to hit B to break it. Now I'm going to come back here and hit tab to, hit tab to transient on my aux track. B to break it. Now I'm going to click back here double-click my original section. I'm going to hit the 
colon, semicolon, and I'm going to hit B again. And the reason I did that, as I zoom in, you'll see. Slide over here, zoom in. Ah, you see how this one, my tab to transient snapped earlier than it did on my auxiliary track. That's because this is our difference. And so if I come up here and change this value to samples, we can see exactly how many samples that is. And that is 108 samples, which is odd because it's supposed to be 73. So let's zoom in further and we're gonna manually do it this time. I'm gonna take this little valley. We need to be off grid mode. We need to be in slip. I'm gonna zoom in nice and tight and I'm gonna get this tiny, tiny bottom where there's just a, a little elbow kink. Kink. And I'm uh, gonna break it right there. I'm gonna drop down and break it right there below it. And again, that was the semicolon. Now I'm doing the same thing right here on the aux track. Break it and let's see how that measures. 73 samples. So we know that that was 73 samples, just like the, uh, actually, I don't know if it's in the new manual, but it should be. So 78 samples is what console produces on the auxiliaries as of version 9.10. So anyway, we are measured there. But let's say I want to use a plugin. So because we're not using IDC, we actually do need to compensate for that plugin. So I may have messed up that sphere video a little bit. Sorry. Um, it's always been close enough for me, but really it is half a millisecond off if you don't compensate for that. So sorry about that, guys. I'm just going to drop a marker here and say unison, which should, which should add 55 more samples once I put a unison plugin in here. So I'm just going to drop a unison channel strip. Um, doesn't really matter which one I add because they're all going to do the exact same thing. Grab my trusty SM59. Very low level. Turn that guy up. Still very low level because this is a 737. That'll work. And we don't need anything precise except our timing here. So I'm just going to start my recording. Got my mic. That's it. Stop it. Zoom out. There's my uh, crossfade because I have automatic crossfades enabled on punches. That's what you were seeing there. We're just going to come right in here and do exactly the same thing. So I've got this tiny elbow right here. Going to mark that. Go down and break below. Find my same tiny elbow. It's not exactly the same, so I'm just increase my gain slightly to see it. Mark right there. That's it. Double click. 73 samples. Hmm. Why is that? It's because Unison always prints, which means we do not need to compensate for anything that's Unison because it's always printing. And because we don't have IDC enabled, it prints correctly. So. Let's say I use a plugin in the insert slot instead. So goodbye unison. And let's add a 1073. Eh, heck, let's add a 550A. So the 550A also adds 55 samples, but it's not unison, which means it doesn't print, which means we do need to compensate for it. And again, a lot of this is splitting hairs, but if you want to be precise, that's what we need. So if I'm doing something phase aligned and not using my dry track as a backup copy, then I'm going to be really precise on this. And this is kind of the same thing that I do if I have two mics on a source, like a guitar, I'll, like a guitar amp. I'll very slightly move those and I'll check and see how close I am and uh, make compensation from there. But anyway, so now we have new marker. This one's called insert and start record. Trusty SM59, two snaps, zoom out, zoom in, find our elbow. We have a few, I'll mark that one. 
drop down break there with B. Zoom in here. Find that same elbow. Hey, that was a lucky drop. Break it there. Double click it. 128. 55 plus 73 equals 128. So we're exactly right. And that's all there is to it. In other DAWs, it's going to be handled a little bit differently. Um, but this is going to make sure that you are 100% aligned. Okay, if you're really glutton for punishment, I'm going to go ahead and relaunch PT with IDC set to medium. So it's going to compensate automatically. And I'll show you what happens. So there's my new marker. Save session, quit Pro Tools. By the way, the new Pro Tools, so slow to launch. Super sucky, started two versions ago. Okay, so here I am in console. Now I'm going to enable medium IDC. And again, this is 100 samples. Should have opened Pro Tools first, but I didn't, so I'll edit this so it's faster. Pro Tools, no, you can never notify me for anything. Okay, enable these two tracks. <laughs> Use the right mic. Okay, and zoom in. And notice that. Yep, the original is later than the aux. Break, down, break, break. Measure, 72 samples ahead. Anyway, that's why I don't use IDC, because it tells the driver to use an, a specific amount of samples and it automatically delays all the tracks that amount of samples. So. Kind of a weird idea, kind of a weird design choice in my opinion. So lastly, now that we have figured out all these delays, all we would need to do is compensate for it. So if we go to console view in Pro Tools, and in our view, mix window views, we need to see delay compensation. And then we would just enter the appropriate number. So if we were needing to compensate for our aux input and the API or something else like that, then we would just enter that amount of minus 128. And that would make sure that the two play back in perfect time. If you're using a sphere plugin, you technically would be 73 plus 24. It's gonna depend on your sample rate. I'm at 48. Um, so for me, it would be 97 samples, but if you're using a unison preamp, you'd simply be 73 samples to keep everything in line. Now, if you're using IDC, all bets are off because it's really going to be different in a lot of situations. Um, and the fact that it's a hundred samples on medium doesn't compensate for say a unison preamp and an API plugin that will be 110 samples, which exceeds that. So then you have to start doing some crazy math and that's it. So thanks for watching. Matt Hepworth. See you next time.